go ahead and start recording this. Uh, Rudy, is that uh, Rudy Callen by possible? I, I promoted Rudy to a panelist, but let me... Um, Well, we'll just leave Rudy there. <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. You guys are probably waiting. I had phone calls back to back come in. So, no worries. And we'll rename it's not my wife on it. That's the computer John DeBalt uses, but he's just not here yet. I'm also, give me one second, if you can, Matt, I have um, the agenda third. I just need to call up one. Well, what I really need to do is go get John DeBalt. So just one sec. Not quite sure who that is. It's not a valid message marked for deletion. Saved message. I think that was Alex. So yeah. I muted him. All right. Um, I I am ready, uh, Matt, when you and the group are. Chris Newman did text me. He's going to be uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes. He's got a parent obligation, but he will be joining on late. Looks like we've got a quorum, though. Yes, sir. Okay. And I will try to um, Great. Thank you. All right. The time is 703. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Secretary DeBalt, will you please take roll? Uh, Shankel. Here. Here. You too. Present. Cox? Here. Manchester? Not yet. Uh, Hunt? I heard Bill's voice earlier. I think that was on a voicemail. Oh. Uh, Wartella? Here. Newman is late. Holmes? Here. And DeBalt? Here. Thank you. Um, just as a reminder uh, for anyone, if, <clears throat> if you are tuning in from outside of the village of Vicksburg, uh, please state so. If, so I'll leave a few seconds if anyone needs to update their status. Sorry about that. This is uh, Wartella. I'm in Brady Township. Thank you, Mr. Wartella. Any hey. other? Right. Just to, uh, if you give me one second, uh, Rick Manchester's just uh, joining. Uh, so you'll see him up here in a second. Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you, Rick. I think oh, Matt. Sorry, I said we have a little technical difficulty here.
Rick, are you turning in, tuning in from the village of Vicksburg? Yes. Yeah, I'm at my home. Yeah. Great. Starting Thank down. you. Yep. yep. All right. Agenda item number three, approval of the agenda. Uh, I will call for a motion for the approval of the agenda. This is where tell I uh, move that we approve the agenda for um, Monday, May 10th, 2021 as submitted. Thank you. Support. This is Rick Manchester. I'll support it. Thank you. Any discussion? <clears throat> Secretary DeVault, will you take a roll call, please? Dankel? Yes. Mucha? Yeah. yeah. Cox? Yes. Manchester? Yes. Wartella? Yes. Holmes? Yes. DeVault? Yes. Great. Agenda item number four is approval of uh, last month's meeting minutes from April 12th. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Uh, this is Rick Manchester. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from April 12th as they are presented. Support. Okay. All right. We have support on that motion. This is Cox, I support. Thank you. Any discussion on the minutes from last meeting? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Secretary DeVault? Schenkel? Yes. Mucha? Yes. Cox? Yes. Manchester? Yes. Ortella? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Vault, yes. And, uh, and Bill uh, Hunt in though. Yeah, Bill Hunt just tuned in at 707. 707. I, I've sent him a message asking him to unmute electronically. Bill, can you hear us? Yeah. Great. We can hear you too, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. All right, agenda item number five, we'll open it up for public comment. Uh, if there are any members of the community that would like to share any comments, it is limited to four minutes. From your computer, you'll need to click on the yellow raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. And if you're calling in from the, your telephone, uh, you'll need to press star nine to raise your hand and then to speak, uh, star six unmutes you so that you can talk. So give it about 20, 30 seconds. Yellow raise hand. The only, uh, I see one citizen on. I'm not sure if uh, Rudy desires to talk or not. Um, but Rudy, if you are, Rudy just unmuted. Uh, I'm, ju I'm just out. I'm just out walking the dog. So I thought I'd listen in on you guys. <laughs> Have a good meeting. <laughs> okay. we'll we'll mute rudy so he can still listen and then uh there's no other citizens on the call mr shankle great and, thank you and, yeah i'll bring back the agenda thank you uh all right so uh, item number six we have the village manager report i'll kick it over to manager mallory yeah, we just take this opportunity. Uh, the project's about 25% complete. We're, we'll get an update tomorrow, but I believe we're about eight or nine days behind our original tabletop schedule that was mainly created due to some hiccups we had getting under the railroad and the dewatering early on in the project. But for the last five weeks, we have maintained the schedule that we anticipated. One of the things uh, that's fairly significant, I think that's important for the community is in the area that the project's being completed, we're updating all the water services. So if they had galvanized or lead leads, we are updating those to copper so we can have uh, any type of lead component out of the system. 
uh, as an example of the aging infrastructure of the village of Vicksburg on Prairie Street, we have a, a water line that's been in service since 1935 that's being taken out to uh, serve the citizens in that area. So that's this, this week, uh, our component of the project is working on that as well as on Spruce Street, we have new water main going in in the three and 400 blocks are all getting new services due to those galvanized or lead components. The unfortunate, uh, what happens in this situation is we have to shut down the water main. So some residents will be out for a few hours. We we're caught a little off guard as that process began this morning. So about five minutes after the notification of the process, we had it up on our social media, uh, but we certainly apologize to those impacted. And in a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m., we'll uh, get clarification on um, our desire to have a more advanced uh, warning to be able to communicate with the citizens. But I found it more productive, uh, Mr. Shankel. I'm, I'm open to any questions connected to the infrastructure. And then uh, um, after that's concluded, I'll move into some of the specifics of the village manager's report. Are there any questions for the village manager regarding the infrastructure project? All right. Just We'll uh, try to attempt to I'm going to share the screen on the um, All right, appreciate the patience on, um, and hopefully everyone can see this. But again, we usually for the purposes of the Downtown Development Authority, do our first budget amendments in the third quarter. And these are all the ones known to date. It leaves us room in the fourth quarter uh, if we have some changes. This is, uh, um, you know, and we put an explanation uh, that this is done for um, all four quarters within the village council of the overall budget. But now as we're ending the 2021 fiscal year, uh, it's imperative that, that we make sure our funds are in alignment. So as we've stated there, the annual budget process is important for the village of Vicksburg and determine the resources needed to fund the goals and objectives to meet the needs of the citizens and visitors of the village. And it provides, the budget provides control and accountability over revenues and expenditures of the government. Once the budget is adopted, which occurs prior to June 30th of each year, we per periodically monitor uh, throughout the year to ensure that we're on track with our projected spending and that it's always underneath the revenues. This year has been unique. We prepped a budget uh, while in the start of a worldwide pandemic. It was a budget prep very conservatively with unknowns to would we hold our tax base, state shared revenue and other revenue streams that the village receives. Um, but as we move forward, we're pleasant or happy to report uh, both state and federal revenues are on track as the past couple years. So, um, what I'd like to do, if you're okay with it, Mr. Shankle, is I'll, I'll go through each item. I, um, if someone has a question, if they can just uh, verbally uh, go ahead and stop me and we'll answer under each question. Um, but this is, as we go through this, on the revenue side, property tax, you can see an increase of the $7,665.24. 
Um, that is the exact amount of money we've brought in this fiscal year. Like we said, we projected our revenues at a conservative level uh, to ensure that um, we would not have to reduce these, these funds. So you'll see the recommendation there is when I say an increase, that's to the budgetary amount of the, the same dollar, $7,665. 24 cents. That's from the village of Vicksburg. And that's the collection of tax money specific in the downtown development um, boundaries. The same way we, we receive money from the townships, both Schoolcraft and Brady on, on those uh, DDA funds. Um, and we are um, upping those to an exact amount by uh, 5000 $993.79. If you're curious, I uh, just have to get the document in front of me, but I'll give you the, the totals. The total uh, revenue this year in the village of Vicksburg was $35,165.24. And the total revenue from the two townships was $21,493.79. So just over uh, $56,500 is, is the amount of tax money that's collected within this specific fund. I'll pause there if there's any questions. The other revenue are the $121 on investment reference uh, some CDs that we have money in the exact amount of money that was brought in for the 2020 Christmas in the village was four thousand and fifty dollars uh, we always do that exact amount in the third quarter that miscellaneous revenue um, was associated to late fees uh, reference some loans that were paid so that um, uh, Jim, with the I mean, this this holiday event one, let's hold off here on looking at this shared screen. That's correct on the revenues up to that point, and then I'll get the uh, updated document up. So go ahead with the question. So, yeah, Jim. So am I am I understanding this that this is a um, an increase uh, compared to our anticipated. Uh, revenue for this year? Is that what I'm understanding? Well, it's, it, I wouldn't term it, it's the accurate reflection of the amount of dollars that we brought in. So it's an increase to what the budget was presented in June of 2020, where we were projecting how much to get, how much we were going to okay. get. So so regarding the property taxes, what's the, I guess, what's the reasoning behind the increase there? It's not, it's not an increase. We prepped a budget that there'd be a decrease with the COVID situation. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, it's about uh, give or take, it, it's less than 1% either way uh, of a three year average. Okay. So so basically we were budgeting really conservatively with the just kind of unknowns and things turned out to be better than they were anticipated or at least what we planned for. Correct. As an example, I think we budgeted this um, at like a 25% potential reduction uh, and we it was less than 1%. Uh, same with state shared revenue that doesn't affect the DDA fund at all. We prepped that for a 35% reduction back in June of 2020, and that's held even as well. So it's a, but they're tracking the three year trend. So is that held even with like historical data? Is that where you're kind of relating that to? Yeah, the three year tre trend would be the revenues that have been brought in by the village. Okay. There's and, uh go ahead. Can you can you scroll just back up real fast? I want to make sure I'm asking the right. Yeah, so the property taxes are really what what we're seeing. And so you what so 
the 7,660,524 compared to the three year look back, is that a a positive or a negative net for the DDA? It, it would it would be less than a percent so I would say it's it's equal okay. to, to the last year okay on 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 the tax collection of it okay and the, the way the way this is um, taken in is um, there's kind of a special assessment on the the downtown businesses is that correct that's where this revenue comes from Correct. It's it's the tax revenue associated within the downtown development district. Okay. So it's specific. There's a, a, a mill, a certain amount of millage specific in that area that's collected and set, af- set aside to be utilized and reinvested in the downtown district, as well as uh, um, a substantial portion of the money we receive from Schoolcraft Township is related to the industrial park. So when those parcels were structured, it was structured within the Downtown Development Authority, those bordering municipalities that have some tax responsibility as well in the village have signed off on a portion of their amount of money coming to the village so that reinvestment takes place. And then just as a quick reminder to everyone, this legislation was created in the state of Michigan in the mid 1970s. And it was designed in an era when people were fleeing core urban centers as a way to incentivize municipalities to continue to invest in their downtowns. Um, It's as well, one of the seven revenue streams we look at when evaluating uh, what money to use. And it's a formal policy now of the council that we attempt to use all revenue streams prior to the general fund tax revenue. Okay. Do you want? I, is there a question from anyone else? Um, the um, we're going to take this out under because uh, that it'll be easier for me than to look for the the updated document, um, as well as we're going to take this one out. Let me make sure. I I distributed the um, need to make sure I have the correct expense. this is a problem when you take too many phone calls at the. I'm going to, Alex, so for the sake of time, uh, but I'm going to ask you to talk about so I can get the expense document up and listed, um, bring them up to speed on what the downtown business is. We had that question before and explain the survey process and that. Okay, thanks, Jim. The uh, we mailed the annual DDA survey approximately three weeks ago. Um, where we stand today is a twenty-five percent return rate, and I say where we stand today because uh, it is a little fluid. I got a call from uh, one of our business owners today who wanted to talk to me and give me his answers. Uh, over the phone and for some reason, some of our mail seems to be taking a longer route around the country than just the village of Vicksburg. So those are trickling in as well. That 25% return rate um, seems a little weak, but when you look at the normal 
external survey, you usually get a 10 to 15 percent uh, response rate. So in the shadow of the average external survey, uh, we're doing pretty well. Of those that responded, 50% indicate they plan improvements to their buildings in the next 12 months. 25% of those respondents have used DDA loans and grants. The top priorities uh, that returned in the survey, overwhelmingly, the business owners would like to see us fill our downtown storefronts. Um, and the second priority, uh, ahead of the rest was uh, they would like to see us resume village events like the car show, Christmas in the Village and those types of things. Um, other comments, and these are comments that showed up on more than one survey. Um, so that comment was repetitive. Uh, there is a need for more trash receptacles in our downtown area. We're aware of that. We'll address that with the streetscape project. Um, another comment that people made is that they appreciate uh, and hope we continue our DDA grants and loans program. Other positive comments, um, people appreciated the approved or improved web and social media president, presence. Uh, specifically, they appreciate the meeting minutes and videos available on the website. Um, they appreciate the positive and interesting information uh, we provided. And we also heard a lot of positives about our village staff, the office staff, the DPW, and our police department. And that's uh, a quick look at our annual survey. I appreciate, appreciate it, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. That was pretty good timing because I've now overcome my talent or lack thereof on technology and Jim I have, a, I have a couple of questions uh for Mr. Lee sure uh Alex I'm curious if you're if you have any thoughts on how um you you might be able to improve the percentage of the return mail uh I would I would agree with you I would, I would it's a little surprising to me that the percentage of returned would not be closer to 50%. But um, I know there's certainly a lot of challenges with USPS and things like that right now. Or have you thought of any ways to maybe incentivize or um, get a higher response rate? Um, yes and no. I think yes in that um, this has been an unusual year. So were I to do it again, I would probably uh, make a lot more phone calls, um, you know, given, but we were probably 10 to 15 points um, ahead last year, but there was uh, a lot of optimism because we're out ahead of this pandemic. Um, so, yes, I, I, I think next year, if, um, you know, we're a little slow coming back. We'll, we'll get on the phone or we'll get on the street and visit folks. One, one of the additional things we're going to do is we're sending an email out that's all prepped to go tomorrow, um, have, leaning towards the uh, uh, infrastructure project, but the email is gonna go out to, to our business leaders downtown. Back a year ago, we held I think four or five Zoom calls during the stages of COVID just to keep communication with them and different opportunities. We did that again back in December, uh, held three different Zoom meetings. So um, it'll be next Tuesday morning uh, and, and uh, Friday afternoon, or no, Tuesday, Tuesday it's later and Friday's the morning one. Uh, to give them an opportunity to hear from us, but also have an opportunity for input on the budget as it relates to the village as a whole, and then specific to downtown. Uh, Tuesday nights at seven, I've uh, had uh, I've a total of five Zoom meetings scheduled with residents of a specific area. 
throughout the village. I've helped two of those so far, another one scheduled for tomorrow. So it's a part of that series. So we'll be acquiring data through that contact as well, Mr. Shankle. The other question that I had for Mr. Lee was um, the, sounds like the response of uh, business owners wanting the rest of the storefronts filled up. I'm curious if you have any context behind that, the reasoning why that is. Um, I, I think there is a lot of focus downtown with the infrastructure group and uh, uh, with the new streetscapes, number one. Number two, I think the announcements of um, the new credit union and the new bakery coming downtown has added to, to that focus. Um, and we, we do have a lot of storefronts that aren't designated with a, a permanent use. I think we do a bad job of... Uh, you know, there are a number of ideas. Uh, Paper City has uh, some of the downtown buildings, and there is a lot of movement, but movement in planning and, uh, you know, refurbishing the insides of the buildings to, to meet the code and the requirements for what they want to develop there. So um, we certainly could do a better job there. I think also... Um, a lot of the businesses uh, made comments, uh, especially those folks we talked to, about how tough this past year has been because they've been struggling with closures, some with you know, creating takeout. Uh, on top of that, there's been trouble finding help, especially in the food industry, which makes starting up again. So it's, uh, it makes it very difficult when you don't have the staff and people are ready to come in. I think we had some successful events downtown um, that, that got people focused. Uh, if you look at some of the improvements, especially if you've been to the, uh, the Main Street pub and look at the massive uh, patio that's going in back there that'll enhance our social district, our downtown foot traffic, um, we need to spend a little time focused on informing uh, everybody of those developments, but we also have to be careful uh, because as new businesses are coming in and, uh, you know, Jim and I become aware of them, uh, we are told, we are asked not to disclose some of this stuff until these deals close and the decisions are made. So in a nutshell, I think there's more focus on our downtown with the streetscapes, the social district, we've been paying a lot of attention to it. A lot of what's happening is not yet visible, um, but some of it will be soon and some of it will take a little longer. Great, thank you. Any, any other questions for Mr. Lee? All right, Andrew Mallory, we can get back to the, your expense report here. Yeah, I appreciate that patience there. Uh, I had to find the searchable document to share. So we did, we went through all of the um, uh, revenues and for procedural purposes, Mr. DeBalt, Mr. Shankel, this can be one motion encompassing all of them uh, in one vote. It doesn't have to be done each of these items. Uh, but on the expenses side, uh, we did have an invoice come in from uh, uh, the person who oversaw the DDA website over a year ago, pre-prepping pre this budget, and it was a final bill for services in a previous fiscal year. So that's where you see that $98. Um, the attorney services uh, are pretty exclusive uh, to uh, expenses related to, the, to uh, the social district, which is entirely within the DDA district. Um, so there's administrative attorney services, and you'll see later on uh, economic development attorney services, um, two different departments. So an upward of $750 on uh, expenses on the administrative services. 
Um, the, um, there were the expenses for economic development this is all associated to the Christmas in the village. You can see the expenses there at 3808.74. And again, both revenues and expenses we plug in each year during the third quarter. As a reminder, the uh, committee who did the fundraising fundraised just over $4,000 and those expenses were less than what they fundraised. So we appreciate their efforts. On the economic development side is $2,000 uh, in attorney services. Um, the streetscapes, we did an even amount, I think $10,000 uh, listed off three different streetscapes in, in the uh, fiscal year budget. Um, and the ex these expenses are related. We wanted to go to standardize municipal signage, both in parking, and you'll see it as it moves forward once the streetscapes and the project's done, but both uh, we put that sign that we want in our municipal lots on North Kalamazoo, as well as when we repaved the Main Street uh, or the lot behind Main Street. Um, I just got to move. So we want to increase um, the Prairie Street one from $3,300 to $6,300. And um, the associated revenue just comes off uh, the revenue. So there, there's no, you know, in the total amount that we listed before that $56,000. North uh, Kalamazoo parking lot, we knew that there would be some finishing up items in this fiscal year that have all already been done but we waited until that total amount was with, and I don't, I can answer questions if people want to get down into the weeds, but we had originally listed 58,000 carrying forward for that project. The actual expenses were $27,110. So we wanted to accurately reflect that amount in the project cost. Um, and then uh, I'll change the, the last one. It should not read the 1920 fiscal year. It should read the 2021 fiscal year. Each year, we some municipalities actually have a percentage that they would um, take from Downtown Development Authority and apply it to just on this call alone. You have Michelle Morgan, Bobby Durkee, myself, and Alex Lee. So a percentage of our salaries would be paid for by this fund. We do that in our water, our sewer, and our golf course fund all pay percentages of our salaries. We felt it was best in uh, where the DDA is, is moving forward as well as there's other funds, uh, just a flat dollar amount. So that flat dollar amount that we built into the budget's $4,000. So what happens is, is $4,000 gets moved from DDA restricted funds to the general fund non-restricted where it could be used someplace else. But it also meets the standard or the bar that these funds are contributing to the overall uh, services being provided by the village. That's DPW services. Uh, I mean, you could get down into the weeds that a municipality would be entitled to uh, renting the equipment they use for plowing the streets uh, to the DDA fund. Instead of doing all of that, we just uh, cover it with a flat fee. But I'll pause there and answer any questions on the expense side. Jim, just to be clear, we're what we're considering here for the for this uh, motion is a an amend, amendment to this current fiscal year's budget, reflecting some of the updates that need to happen with the budget. Correct. We're nine months into the budget that was prepped in June of 2020, and these are accurate numbers uh, as we sit nine months in into the budget so so this goes as of um march 31st okay 
Can can you um, just scroll down to the back down to the expenses for me, please? Sure. Uh, maybe next page. Uh, keep going. So the yeah. So the streetscape. Um, that's that's really. Um, don't get focused on the title because it's the number that means more to Michelle and I. Yeah. Um, but that's the fund that we had identified to use some of that uh, way signage that we were implementing in downtown. So it's more the fund number versus, versus the name Streetscapes. Yeah, this is... Um... I'm just looking at the 3,300 to 6,300, you know, that's a, a pretty big increase, relatively speaking. I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts on. No, it's, it's, it's overall in that, I mean, you have, we're, we're in that activity level budget in government. So the actual fund has $10,000 in it. Um, okay. And it's divided into three different departments. Well, the fund has more money than that. The department has $10,000. Within the department, there's three line items that one of those line items were divided out 3,300. So what, what this is, is it 100% it will cover the expenses in that line item and expenses under revenues. Uh, so the overall will go from 10,000 to... Uh, 13,000 and the expenses will be about 6,300. So this is what, and, and probably next year, what I'll do, and I can, I can um, certainly do it in one of the upcoming months is show each year how we come expenses under revenues, which is reflected by our auditors and then how we apply that money and carry forward in a capital plan that involves the DDA. But no, it doesn't bother me a bit. What, what, so what, what this process does is ensures our audit doesn't have any auditing comments. So I, I just want to kind of put that in layman's terms for myself here. I think what I hear you saying is, is that there's a bucket of money uh, there that easily covers the, the, these amounts. Um, we're just kind of moving money around inside of that bucket to account for the different activities that are uh, coming. Is that correct? Accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. Get I don't have it. any further questions. Uh, does the commission have any questions for the village manager? Um, this is a uh, member DeVault. <clears throat> on the, on the $4,000 coming into the, at the end of this uh, thing, what restricted fund is that coming out of? It's coming out of the 248 fund, the, the, you can look at it as it's part, the village receives $56,000 in tax money. So it would be out of that total amount of money that then gets moved to the general fund. So it's coming out of the DDA general fund and moving to the there is no DDA, village general. There, there, there's no DDA general fund. That okay. it's the other the other way that the council could have set it up is to which would have expensed the 248 code considerably more money if we kept track of how much staff time was involved in activities associated mm -hmm. with the DDA. Instead, what the decision was made, staff recommended, and it was supported by the council just charge a flat fee to that restricted fund of $4,000. It meets the benchmark that that restricted fund is reimbursing the general fund 
for expenses associated to the DDA. Okay. I, I, I think it's important to highlight for, for members of this board and our community that every dollar we can save out of the general fund is a benefit to every single person in this village, including every single entity within the Downtown Development Association as they pay general fund tax dollars as well. I, you know, I, I can as well, I think it's important to note as recent of three years ago when the DDA was, well, I mean, it was four years ago when the DDA had an independent DDA director, not only was $65,000 a year paid to that salary, but an additional $15,000 a year was paid for an outside firm to keep the books. So there's considerable amount of money being saved by staff. Um, and, and I think the results, not only of projects being completed, but fiscal responsibility that taxpayer speaks for itself. Go ahead, Dan. Jim, this yep. is, uh, this is where Tella, uh, the, the staff salaries and, um, associated, um, funds come out of the general fund, out of the village general fund, correct? No. Salaries, salaries and benefits? Do not. They're all divided by, um, we have again, seven different revenue streams that come into the village. They're appropriately divided out amongst and across those different revenue streams as those areas. Uh, for myself, um, the golf course mm -hmm. pays 5% of my package. I think the, and this was adjusted this year, I think uh, sewer and water are either 15 or 20% each because of the amount of time I have to spend within the infrastructure budget. Um, and the general fund, I think pays 50 or 60%. But there's no, there's not once, other than our police department, our police department is fully funded by general fund dollars. Every other position within the village is a matrix of those seven uh, revenue streams that are coming in. I, I'm familiar with this um, method of um, charging um, time uh, against a project, especially if there is um, federal funds involved in it. Uh, it, it does lower the uh, the amount of money that would come out of a village or a, a governmental agency's uh, funds, and and I think this is a this is a good idea. Uh, apparently, you've made the decision you're not going to get really, as you say, down in the weeds or carried away, where you would charge. Okay, we're gonna we've got a plow truck and we're plowing in the DDA, so the hours for the driver and the truck and, uh, and so on are going to be taken out of there. That's uh, that, no. That's not happening and it's not going to happen. Well, I, I can't comment on what's going to happen. It's set by the council. They ultimately control and approve all of the budgets for the village. What I can say is, is the last two years, at least maybe three, but definitely the last two, this was the avenue that the council decided to take. I can't stress enough there are many, many municipalities that might be the majority. Snow plowing is a great example. All of our parking lots are in the downtown development area. Uh, snow plowing in many, many municipalities is exclusively paid for by the DDA revenue. I think one of the things I always uh, sometimes has difficulty, one, one is, and I'm not gonna hide from it, is the way the DDA was run before. It was not run the proper way, uh, but we don't have to relive that. I think the important thing is, is that the investments that are being made utilizing revenue that the village receives from taxes generated within the 
Downtown Development Authority are all reinvested in the Downtown Development Authority area. Thank you, Jim. I think someone else, and I might have, uh, I had, but I thought someone else might have been asking a, a question. Hearing no other questions, um, Jim, are we at the point where staff would like a, I think I heard you say that you'd like for this to go to a vote. Is that, is that correct? No, it these, has uh, to, these amendments. It, 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 since it's utilizing downtown development dollars, it does require a, a vote. And then this will be part of a larger next Monday third quarter um, budget amendments in front of the council. So in front of the council, they'll be told this has gone in front of the DDA board and, and then provided those results. Okay. Next Monday, we also have a Brownfield, which is a separate fund with a separate board meeting at 6 p.m. So they'll be provided their third quarter budget <laughs> amendments, same manner as this. There's also a specific amount charged off um, that goes to the general fund. I think for that that one, it's uh, uh, it's three or four thousand dollars, but same thing. Um, Jim, I, I might ask you to. Uh, maybe phrase the motion for the group just to make sure yeah. that we're yeah i think we're what, clear sure what what would cover it is a motion that uh supports the staff recommendations as they've been presented and articulated on um the document and second in approval and what happens then is, is the financial team will impl implement all of those in our BSNA system and uh, we'll run it and make sure everything's balancing. Great. All right, I will uh, call for a motion. Uh, Rick Manchester, I'll make a motion that we approve it as uh, outlined and described, as Jim just uh, described it. So oh, as I Cox, heard, I second. <laughs> yeah. So the the motion would be to to support and approve all the third quarter budget amendments as presented. We have Manchester um, initiating the motion. We have Bill Cox uh, supporting. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, Secretary DeVault, will you take a roll call, please? Yanko? Yes. Mucha? Yes. Cox? Yes. Manchester? Yes. Hunt? You're on mute, Bill. Maybe come back to Mr. Hunt. I can come back to him. Uh, Wartella? Yes. Uh, Hunt? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Devault? Yes. Let me uh, see if I can bring back up the... <laughs> I'll bring back the agenda, uh, hopefully here.
All right, looks like we have 7A and B crossed off our list. Uh, what about 7A? This is, we wanted a little uniqueness on Zoom. I have spoke to some members individually of the Planning Commission have sent out, uh, hoping to have discussions with uh, other members as well. But this is specific to the Downtown Development Authority. What we can anticipate in the month at, at June's meeting and um, the, the members of the Planning Commission will receive a pretty detailed summary about a week in advance of that meeting that will be very specific to the 2021-2022 fiscal year. It will highlight the historical revenues of the past two years, as well as what we're projecting um, for, for the 21-22 fiscal year. It will also uh, go into details of each of the, the departments within the 248 fund of what we're anticipating uh, to invest that money into, um, which uh, sure there's a number of administrative things, but at a high altitude, I know that streetscapes uh, will be a, a smaller component of it uh, as we're coming out of, again, we're talking July 1st of 2021, to June 30th of 2022. So part of this money uh, will, and we'll go into greater detail next month, but will include what we're anticipating if additional receptacles are needed with the social district, stuff like that coming out of uh, what's done downtown. Um, we're also going to, to present and recommend uh, a, a more detailed type of marketing strategy, and it will incorporate some non-traditional avenues that we're looking at, both uh, creating a, a potential podcast and story time on utilizing uh, those avenues to get people to come to Vicksburg just out of sheer curiosity. One area um, call it in the CIP. This current fiscal year budget, we had um, looked at setting aside or had $12,500 for Oswald Park at Main and uh, Park Street. Uh, we'll probably what's called carry forward that money and add to it. We're right now getting uh, drawings done to have Oswald Park reflect the social district and have that kind of cool hangout type atmosphere where people can hang out. It's gonna be a substantial investment. Uh, so um, you'll see that included in the, the DDA portion of that, um, as well as I'll probably go through what we're anticipating and capital mm -hmm. items of the future and show you uh, where each of those uh, layout. We'll also have, again, the traditional facade grant program, as well as the facade loan program. Um, and we'll be uh, reaching out to the foundation uh, to see if they want to continue that partnership. So, um, but I'm willing uh, to listen to other people's ideas and want that input. Um, so if we haven't talked one-on-one, -on -one, I, I'd like to have that conversation before the next meeting, because uh, from my perspective, that that will take up a considerable portion of the Planning Commission's time specific to the DDA budget. Uh, as we present our recommendations, you guys have discussions on that and ultimately vote in support of it or not. Jim, are you, are you asking for some tactical items right now that might be top of mind for the Planning Commission? Sure, if this is, this is a time that we're all together, I'm more than willing to absolutely listen to the thoughts and ideas. Um, and then obviously in a month, if uh, try to incorporate as many of those as we can and those that we don't certainly have an explanation uh, why it might have to wait till preceding years. 
So we're probably not looking to bake these ideas out on this meeting. It's more just kind of get them on paper for uh, records uh, and then you can kind of circle back with us and talk through that if uh, additional dialogue is needed, right? Yes, and that's why I, I the things I mentioned, though, I know will be a portion of what staff recommends an investment, and it's not a full, it pro probably be about 10% of what could be the cost of the update of Oswald Park. Um, I know the facade grant program will be in it. I know the facade loan. I know there'll be administrative uh, investment in it, um, but yeah, and, and a marketing component. So, um, but I'm willing to listen at this point. Any thoughts from the commission? Hi, it's Rick Holmes. If I could, I'd just like to share that um, and having toured the mill and, and them giving us the new timeline um, for when it's going to open, um, obviously we're looking out a number of years versus just around the corner for a portion of it to open up. And in my mind that we still all obviously have a sense of urgency. The streetscapes will be done, the new downtown, um, that, you know, the infrastructure project, all of that is going to look great down there. And we all want it, you know, as, as the, as the survey showed, as Alex indicated, the survey shows we want those shops full. But in, from my perspective, at least, I think that because we have a little bit of a runway here where we're not looking at just a couple of years before it's open, we're actually looking at more like four years. I think, again, from my perspective and the conversations I had with Jim and the issues I shared with him, I'm not necessarily feeling the sense of urgency for immediate action on some items. And again, I don't want it to be, you know, for you to think that I, I don't think we should take immediate action. If it's there, let's do it. But by the same token, I'm just simply saying, I think we have a little bit more runway here in which to develop strategies and um, to work with village and staff in, in implementing them. Would also like to be the first to share some very bad news. Don and I were on the Lions Club meeting before we jumped to here. Um, I was just reading the minutes. We had to jump before they voted. Don, I don't know if you saw the minutes. This year's uh, summer festival is canceled. Jim, I'm, I'm curious um, about kind of the a beautification line item. You know, flower pots, uh, flags, um, continued investment in those kinds of things year over year from a DDA standpoint. I know that when I go to other um, small towns, I'm always kind of looking at opportunities to bring back here. And one thing that I always kind of see um, that really just makes me, um, makes my experience better is when I'm walking through something that's very aesthetically pleasing in addition to the hardscapes. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. In fact, I was telling staff uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, two weekends ago, I traveled down through Indiana and must have went through seven or eight smaller communities. So I couldn't agree with you more on that. Uh, in this fiscal year, and I think it was November this group approved, we purchased all new flags to hang out on the poles downtown. They were back ordered. I don't know if any of you had a chance. We put them up uh, the weekend that the social district opened up just to kind of get an inventory of the poles and in the look as well to spruce up the downtown. But those flags are in the poles. We took them back down just due to due to weather, they'll be back up before Memorial Weekend, as well as mulch will be arriving before Memorial Weekend. We will have, uh, um, as well, a kind of a spruce up downtown, whether it's weed beds and those type of things as well going on. But 100% agree and 100% uh, can guarantee staff will be recommending um, dollars in those areas downtown. As far as the flower beds in that, um, the good news there, it's part of the infrastructure. So we'll build in that type of money 
Um, again, it goes kind of in the same pot of money when I talked about additional receptacles might be needed, that type of thing. But once we see the actual downtown done, which we will prior to the conclusion of the budget we're prepping, will what we feel once we see the practical use, we'll may have some money set aside to make those purchases if that kind of helps <laughs> out. But I, I agree that it goes a, a long way um, in looking looking good. One of the Jim, other we've talked about uh, on this meeting uh, or as this group has been um, evolving the facade grant to include interiors. And so I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not recommending that we move forward with that, but I would like to get a stronger position from staff on how to move forward with that. Um, you know, it seems, it seems like the conversation I'm recalling is, is that um, the, the businesses that have been longstanding businesses have utilized the facade grant program and are somewhat limited um now because they have utilized it they they'd like that ability to begin making improvements in the, in the interior of their buildings as well correct and and we can do that and andrew horn is already and i'm going on memory but i think the uh the significant thing we have to articulate on anything that goes interior that it's still for the public good so that one thing that we latched on to was fire protection, those type of things in those businesses. We just have to make sure it's yeah. for the overall public good. Great. Jim, this is uh, Don Mortella. Uh, Clark Park is something we can still look at as far as needs, wants, and wishes. Is that correct? I know that the um, Parks and Recreation Committee has had uh, several needs, wants, and wishes for improvements in that area but perhaps we could call out something that might specifically be uh, for DDA monies, uh, improvement like that uh, erosion problem that we're having under the, uh, the viewing platform uh, <coughs> and, and maybe some other areas. But Clark Park should be uh, something that we'd wanna look at. Clark Park is um, an area within the DDA that DDA money uh, can be invested in and I, I'll have the exact um, year. I know we dedicated some to a future year to that part, um, but you're absolutely correct. We're taking input from the Parks and Rep group as well on all the parks. Jim, one of the things that I heard uh, Alex mention was kind of the event schedule for downtown um, Vicksburg from the businesses. Uh, I just wanna be really clear, the DDA is not the event organizer for uh, events, but I wonder if there's an opportunity to create a stronger partnership with the Chamber of Commerce for Vicksburg so that there's um, the, just some additional support in some way to make sure that the businesses are being um, supported within a robust event schedule for business generation. Yeah, for you, you, you can, and we're going to take the lead on it because, because it's going to be working with multiple groups. Uh, yeah. But you can, um, the year of 2022 will be the year of celebration and festivals, um, <laughs> focusing mainly on uh, most historical records would say our 150th anniversary is coming up in October. Um, there might be some variant, is it October of, of 21 or maybe even into early 2022, but with everything going on, as we sit right now, I'm very, very confident we'll be holding Christmas in the village as we had done pre-COVID. Uh, the other thing is um, when an entire streetscape and investment is made, we're, we're right now looking at uh, a traditional festivals, car show, Taste of Vicksburg, adding to that uh, repertoire from May through September minimum, but then have additional micro ones. So you'll see in the DDA, that'll come through in the economic development 
department, uh, which is also the department that I'm just kind of labeling marketing. But we will look at holding uh, regular events that draw people to this downtown area and also draw de um, developers' attention that, that it's a fantastic village to invest in. I will uh, let people on the call know the car show will be on next week's agenda for the council um, as they are... Uh, have submitted their applications, have been in contact with the uh, county health department in that. So it will go in front of the council for approval next Monday as a standalone agenda item, but it will uh, receive uh, staff's, my support in holding the car show. I wanna highlight it, it's a council action, so so the council will have discussion and ultimate say. But any other comments for the village manager? This is Demalt. Um, one comment with you, uh, Matt, about the facade grant program. Um, I've talked to quite a, quite a few of the businesses downtown that they are so are waiting till the streets are finished downtown so that are so that when they do redo the facades of their building they complement the streetscapes so they're waiting to see what the streetscapes look like and develop so that it complement downtown together right and that that'll be used probably a lot better next year and the following year because we're out, we're, we're coming out of this pandemic. So, and, and business is coming back. So. Any other comments? All right. Uh, as uh, Manager Mallory asked, uh, if you haven't spoken with him about needs, wants, and wishes for next year, please connect with him via email before next meeting. Uh, agenda item number eight is member comments. Uh, uh, any comments from the Planning Commission members? Would just like to thank Alex and uh, and Jim for helping schedule that tour of the mill last month. Um, it was great to see the, the strides they continue to make on it and, um, and also to spend time with some of, some of you as well. So thank you, Alex. I'd like to thank Alex for uh, getting spearheading the survey for the downtown businesses. And I look forward to hearing more of what he can report back from what their needs and wants and other comments are. So again, thank you, Alex, for what you do on that. And, needed a lot of that yep i second that mr lee thank you all right hearing no further comments we will adjourn this meeting it is 8 13 secretary to devault all right Everybody enjoy the rest of your week thank you guys good evening folks have a good evening